Olivia. I'm Avon. And I'm Kate. And today we're dishing with you from Don Lobos. Don Lobos is one of my very favorite Mexican places in the city, and I always come for lunch for the Mexican tacos, but today we also have quesadillas, enchiladas, um, you know. Taco salad. Taco salad, everything you imagine you'd find in a Mexican Yummy restaurant. Goodness. Yep. One of my favorites. And Don Lobos is located at 2811 M Street Northwest on the edge of Georgetown. And our guest is author and full-time journalist. He's the copy editor for Wolf Blitzer's Situation Room. We have John Dedakis with us, who is who has some novel ideas. Oh, yes. <laughs> Sorry, he gave me the idea. You've got some great books. Your, your first book was Fast Track. Yes. And now your new book is Bluff. Right. Tell us about your books. Uh, the, the, I think the common thread is that the main character is a woman in her mid-20s trying to figure out what to do with her life. That sounds like a lot of people I know. It does sounds like a lot of people I know. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I guess the other theme that goes through with it is uh, journalism, politics, those are sort of the backdrops. Washington things. It, you know, those are Washington things, but the books, these two first books are set in Wisconsin, but the probably the fifth book will be set in D.C. Oh, okay. I, I want to hear about the books, but what I really want to know first is how does a man write about what it's like for a woman? Well, there are a number of ways you can do that. One thing you need to realize is that emotions are not gender specific. Depends who you ask. <laughs> you know, everybody has experienced anger, joy, uh, fear, all those things. It's just that, and maybe you'll agree with this, women are more articulate about this. They talk about it more. Uh, they talk about a lot. They, they talk <laughs> a lot. Yeah. And, uh, and they're very nuanced in the way they talk about it. Um, I've been married 33 years. My wife, I, my wife vents to me about a lot of things. I work in a newsroom filled with 20-something young women who tell me about their boyfriends and their career issues and all this kind of stuff. So that gets you started. And then it helps when you've written a manuscript to have a, a woman read it. in her mid-20s sure. read it and tell you where it resonates well and where it's clunky and doesn't work. And then you make how did you just How did you decide to, to have a 20, woman in her 20-somethings versus a guy versus a, an older woman, a younger woman? Well, you don't want to have, if you're going to write a series, you don't ha want to have a character who's in their 70s. <laughs> right. Dying of a terminal you illness, sort of. You want to be able to grow up. <laughs> and so that's, that's lesson number one. Uh, the other was when I started writing, um, the suggestion was write in a way that stretches you. And so it wasn't a calculated thing. It was just, you know, I've never, I haven't been a woman, so I'll write that way. So what do you have this woman doing? Well, it's things happen. What, the, what, what you have to have happen is something has to happen to her and then she's got to respond to it. Okay. So the whole process gets started. Uh, you have a backstory, and in her case she was nearly raped by her English professor. We don't, we don't see all that, but she drops out of school in her senior year in English at the University of Wisconsin and the aunt who raised her from infancy, this is the beginning of the book, uh, she, uh, my character finds her carbon monoxide poisoning mm traumatic and so that launches her on a search to find out more about her past. She goes to the small town where uh, the accident happened that killed her parents and discovers to her astonishment that her parents were killed in a car train collision and she survived oh. but no one had ever told her. Well why not? What are they leaving out? And so she convinces the newspaper editor to let her do a follow-up story. Two of her sources are the mayor and the sheriff. They're running against each other for Congress. The election is one week away and each guy has a secret that will unravel the mystery. The joke about journalists is that they're, they all have the unfinished novel in their bottom drawer, right? right? So is this your unfinished, now finished thing that you've had in your bottom drawer? Uh-uh. No? no? Nope. You, did you always know that this is what you were going to do? You, you nope. were just inspired. I knew I wanted to write, but 
for 40 years I've been a just the facts man mm -hmm. journalist. And so when I first started to experiment with other writing, I was doing a, a, a biography of a friend of mine who was murdered. But the problem was, it was time consuming, it was expensive, the stuff I was digging up was causing all kinds of consternation in his family. Mm -hmm. So I decided fiction is something that you can do in your jammies, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and so uh, it, it ended up, I mean, I draw from personal experience, but this just fell into my lap, so to speak. So you've just finished the second. So Fast Track was your first, Bluff is your second, and we, you know, you have more on the way. I'm you working on a book called Troubled Water, and in this book, Lark, my main character, moves from Wisconsin to Georgia to take a full-time job at a uh, daily newspaper as opposed to the weekly that she's been working on. She discovers the body of a small of a teenager, and it turns into a serial killer situation. Plus, she's just getting her legs at this new job at a newspaper that's got a lot of problems because of the internet. Oh, well, speaking of the changing medium. Yes. You have two different sort of looks of your same book here. What's it, what's the idea here? Well, the interesting thing is my publisher came up with this is the this is the um, the paperback edition, but mm -hmm. it's in a magazine format, and my publisher felt that it would be easier to carry around, yeah. a little less daunting to read because the text is in columns. Um, Wolf Blitzer, my colleague, did a great little blurb for me. But the coolest thing about this book is that my picture is bigger than Wolf Blitzer's. <gasps> oh, that, be, now that means you've hit the big time, right? Is that sort of one of those well, benchmarks? It's, it's guilt by association. <laughs> you can actually read that. It kind of looks like a literary journal, too, so yeah. you could be reading that anywhere and well enjoying said. yourself. Well said. Yes, yes. So, so tell us. Um, how did you come up with, you, he asked you about Lark, Lark is your main character, yes. and we've asked you why she's a woman, but I mean, why is she a journalist? Is she a journalist because you're a journalist? Well, you have to write what you know, mm -hmm. and I know journalism, so that really is what makes, it helps make it more authentic. And, but the majority of people reading maybe haven't ever ha had a stint in journalism, so um, is it just because they want to know about the life of a journalist or journalist that exciting? You know, that's a good question because in my experience, I think a lot of people don't understand what goes on behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. Every time I speak to a group, I am bombarded with questions about media bias. You know, why are, you know, why is Fox right wing? Why are you left wing? And they don't understand all that goes on behind the scenes. And so some of that inadvertently is instructive for people who really need to understand a little bit better about what goes on before a story gets And part of the published. job of a journalist is sort of to be a crime solver as well. So there's that natural story arc, if you will. And not just about, about the facts. Mm -hmm. Right, right. It's, uh, there's a lot of uh, wisdom that's required and, and uh, you know, there's, there's just a lot, of, a lot that goes into it that people never see. There are ethical issues off the record versus on the record. There's a great scene where my character has a major argument with her publisher about going off the record uh, because she gets the story but she can't tell it mm -hmm. because she went off the record. Well, the journalists might be on the fast track, but one thing they can't ever do is bluff. So yes. I can't wait to read this one. <laughs> Sounds fantastic. Thank fast you. track and bluff. John, thank you so much for being with us. Thank you. These are must reads. And this is a must watch show. So thanks so much for being with us. <laughs> you can follow us on Twitter. You can be our fan on Facebook. And as always, come back and see who we're dishing with, just like John, right here on The District Dish.